Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices and you can sign up for product alerts. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. When I was a kid, uh, I used to love playing outdoor games with my family. We'd play lawn darts, uh, we'd play croquet and things like that. Uh, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that kind of takes a little bit of both of those things, puts them together, and puts more of a gamery game around it. Today we're going to be taking a Kingdom's Lawn game. Let me show you how it's played, and I'll see you on the other side. Kingdom's Lawn game is made to be played on natural terrain like grass, dirt, or sand, and today we are on the beach. It can be played on flat or sloping. This beach is sloping a little bit, uh, but let's show you how we play. Now this can be played between 2 and 16 players. Now there's four different kingdoms, and each kingdom is going to come with four castles, which shows the logo of that kingdom, and four armies, which are the round uh, balls there that are made of wood. So if each player is using one ball and one army, you can play up to 16 players. But if you're playing with less, players can be rolling more than one of these armies out onto the, to the field. Now the standard playing size is about 30 feet wide by 30 feet long. And essentially you set up the guidelines with the stakes and it will show you where the boundaries are of the game. Now players will line the kingdoms up like we see here from left to right. And then, starting on the left and going to each kingdom to the right one at a time, one of the castles is going to be thrown underhand into the play area. And once all 16 castles has been thrown out, then they all get stood up and that makes pretty much the setup of the game. Then, starting with the farthest left kingdom and moving down the battle line, each player will take a turn throwing underhand one of those balls, the armies, at the opponent's castles attempting to knock them over. So each kingdom essentially will roll one, it will be the next kingdom's turn, and so on and so forth. Now they can be rolled on the ground or thrown through the air as long as the motion is underhand. And you're essentially trying to knock down the opponent's castles. After all the armies are out there, then the battle phase ends and everyone goes and retrieves its four balls or armies and returns back to the battle line for another round of the battle phase. Now all fallen castles stay fallen because they sort of act as obstacles and it's also to note in some areas you can have other obstacles. You can have trees in there, you can have tires, you can have cones. You can set this up any way you like. Now there's no set number of rounds and the game's going to end when one kingdom's castles are left and everyone else's are knocked over. That kingdom wins. Now each of these kingdoms have a special ability. The monarch, for example, they have resistance, essentially allows them to declare immunity, meaning nobody can knock their castles over for one specific battle phase. The runes can rethrow each of their castles once as you're setting up the beginning of the game. The sabers, they can throw castles and armies using any throwing motion, overhand, sidearms, you name it. Now the ember can throw things one step past the battle line. Now that battle line stays unless nobody hits a castle over in a specific battle phase, and then it's moved three stake lengths in, so it makes it a little easier. But the embers are always one step ahead of that. Now it's encouraged for kingdoms to form alliances with other kingdoms, and they're not binding, and they can be broken at any time, and conversations and agreements are you know, part of the game. Now, even when you're knocked out by standard playing, you remain in the game to, you know, go back and get the people that got you and help other people out. There's also a variant where if you knock down the last castle of a kingdom, you get their armies to be rolling. There's also ghost castles where if there's kingdoms not being played, then when you knock one of those over, you get one of their armies to throw. So that's pretty much it. The last kingdom standing wins. Now we were looking at the Ancient Kingdom set, but there are two other sets called New Age and Distant Lands. And essentially the only difference is the logos of the kingdoms and the abilities. But all 16 abilities of all the different uh, kingdoms are in the same rule book. So if you really want to, you can mix and match. Now there's Kingdom's Lawn Game. Let's uh, talk about the things I liked about it. The game has great quality. You know, it's these nice chunky wooden castles and balls armies. Uh, so you're getting a good quality product here from just the components standpoint. I like that. It comes in that nice big carry bag. Uh, so you can just basically take it to where you're going, take it to the barbecue, take it to the beach, take it to the forest. Like, you know, I showed you uh, I was on the beach this time. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, you know, it's a good quality uh, game here. Now, it sort of mashes together that sort of lawn darts because at the beginning you're kind of throwing your castles out just to start the game. And then bocce ball, which is trying to roll balls. In this case, you're trying to knock people's castles over. But it has that sort of gamer special abilities tying it all together, which 
they're subtle, but but they can make a big difference. And they can make it how you use that could win or lose you the game. I like that you can play this with a wide variety of player counts from two to 16. So, it, you know, doesn't matter how many people want to play at your cookout. You know, you can find a game to play and you just figure out some players might be rolling multiple armies for each kingdom. Or you could play with less kingdoms and use the ghost variant, which brings me to the, 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 the next thing I like are the different variants. The ghost variant is cool if you don't use all those uh you know, castles and kingdoms, you can, if you knock them over, then you get their armies. That's kind of cool. Uh, we kind of did some house rule things that were kind of fun. Uh, th the abilities, now the rules come with the abilities for all the, the three different sets, uh, which are essentially is uh, t uh, 12 different kingdoms. Well, you could take some of those abilities and what we'd like to do is like, we put them all on paper and we drafted them. And we did like a reverse draft for, uh, okay, if you get to draft first, then you get your last draft of where you're standing and stuff like that. So you can kind of like gamerize this even more with some house rules, which we did, which was a lot of fun. Uh, so overall, if you're looking for that sort of nostalgic type of outdoor game at a, your next cookout or family gathering, uh, and you want it to be a little bit more still easy where you just tell people to roll, but you have that the alliances that you're being built with other players and other kingdoms uh, using the special abilities, if it looks up your alley, then check this out. On the negative side of things, uh, the game might be too expensive for some. Now it's on their website for about $98. Uh, but you know what? I would mention I used to play croquet just for the heck of it. I looked up these days and you can get croquet sets for about half that, but you're only playing with six people where now you can play with 16 people, uh, more than twice that. And it's not more than twice the price. So value wise, I think this is still good. And again, cause you're getting a quality game and you're getting some nice big wooden components. Uh, 98 might sound expensive, but for what you're getting in there with all that wood and the carry bag and all that and the amount of players you can play with, I don't think that's a bad price. It seems like a good value to me. But again, this is something you're going to have to figure out. So hopefully this has helped you figure out if this game is for you and your family or not. This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships through board games by helping you find the next one you'll love. Lucky Duck Games has four new games available now. In the Court of Miracles, you lead a guild of beggars, scheme with sinister plots, and use trickery to build your own renown in an attempt to take over 16th century Paris. Baron Voodoo is an abstract strategy game involving the collection of thematic soul dice, and it made my top 10 most anticipated releases at Essen Spiel this year. Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is a tower defense with epic heroes that includes a campaign and an infinite replayability mode. It was hugely popular on Kickstarter, raising over $1 million. Chronicles of Crime 1400 is a standalone follow-up to the award-winning Chronicles of Crime, where you'll be solving four unique crimes in medieval Paris. These are all available in stores now, and you can learn more and order them at luckyduckgames.com.